Welcome friends, today we are here to discuss the topic Kingdoms of Life, Prokaryotes, Eukaryotes and Aarchaea. Let us begin with the cell as cell is the structural and functional unit of life and it contains all necessary infrastructures to perform all functions. Students, do you know based on cellular structure, cells are broadly classified as prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Let us begin with prokaryotes. Prokaryotes are the single celled organisms, thus are less complex in nature and are roughly 1 micrometer in diameter. My dear students, unlike eukaryotes, prokaryotes do not have a nucleus that houses its genetic material and thus lacks the organelles. So simply, these are without nucleus. Secondly, the genetic material of a prokaryotic cell consists of a large DNA molecule compacted in an area of cytoplasm called the nucleide region. The nucleide region is protected and encased by the cell wall or cell membrane, which is the outer layering of the cell. Finally, a flagellum, which is a rudder-like device, affords the prokaryote the luxury of mobility. It is smaller in size that is in few micrometer in range. Now let us move from prokaryotes to eukaryotes, which is explained by the theory of endosymbiosis. Let us briefly know about the concept of endosymbiosis, as we living things have evolved into three large clusters of closely related organisms called domains such as bacteria, aarchaea and eukaryote. Number of evidences supports the idea that eukaryotic cells are actually the descendants of separate prokaryotic cells that join together in a symbiotic union. In fact, the mitochondrion itself seems to be great granddaughter of a free living bacterium that was engulfed by another cell, perhaps as a meal and ended up staying as a sort of permanent house guest. Thus, the host cell profited from the chemical energy the mitochondrion produced and in return the mitochondrion benefited from the protected nutrient rich environment surrounding it. Actually, the kind of internal symbiosis where one organism takes a permanent residence inside another and eventually evolving into a single lineage is called endosymbiosis. Now let us move to eukaryotes. Eukaryotic cells are typically complex in nature. The eukaryotic cell has a nuclear membrane that surrounds the nucleus in which the well-defined chromosomes are located. As we know, chromosomes are bodies containing the hereditary material. Thus, eukaryote is any cell or organism that possesses a clearly defined nucleus. Eukaryotic cells also contains organelles as plasma membrane, a lipid protein carbohydrate complex providing a barrier and containing transport and signaling systems. Then is mitochondrion. Mitochondria surrounded by a double membrane with a series of folds called crestia functions in energy production through the process of metabolism. It contains its own DNA and is believed to have originated as a captured bacterium. Then is chloroplasts, also known as plastids. These are surrounded by a double membrane containing staked thylakoid membranes, which are responsible for photosynthesis. Another is lysozymes. Lysozymes are membrane-bound organelles which are also present in eukaryotic cells which are responsible for degrading proteins and membranes in the cell 
and also helps to degrade materials ingested by the cell. Then is rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. A network of interconnected membranes forming channels within the cell covered with ribosomes causing the rough appearance which are in the process of synthesizing proteins for secretion or localization in membranes are rough endoplasmic reticulum. While a smooth endoplasmic reticulum is a network of interconnected membranes forming channels within the cell which is a site for synthesis and metabolism of lipids. It also contains enzymes for detoxifying chemicals including drugs and pesticides. Another is Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus is a series of staked membranes. Vesicles carry materials from rough endoplasmic reticulum to Golgi apparatus. These vesicles move between the stakes while the proteins are processed to a mature form. Vesicles then carry newly formed membranes and secreted proteins to their final destinations including secretion or membrane localization. Then is the vacuoles. Vacuoles are membranes surrounded bags that contain water and storage material in plants. Besides complex structure, eukaryotic cells are much larger in size when compared with prokaryotic cells. Now let us have brief view on classification of eukaryotes. Eukaryotes includes protista such as amoeba which is a single cell but is eukaryote. Then is kingdom fungi such as mushrooms. Then is kingdom planti such as plants which synthesize their food by the process of photosynthesis. And then finally is kingdom animalia such as animals including human beings. Thus, there are four kingdoms of life which are eukaryotic. Rest two are in another group. This was all about differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Let us now know some similarities between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. First of all, both have cell membrane or plasma membrane. Plasma membrane is the one that allows materials in and out, thus is important for survival of cell. Second is that both have DNA. DNA is a molecule that passes genetic information from generation to generation. Both have ribosomes that helps to build proteins. Then is cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is interior fluid in the cell where chemical reaction takes place. So both have cytoplasm also. Besides kingdom prokaryotes and eukaryotes, there is another kingdom that is kingdom Aarchaea. Members of this group resemble bacteria in morphology but have unique cell membrane and cell wall structure. Surprisingly, the Aarchaea are no more closely related to bacteria than they are to eukaryotes. Aarchaea represent a widely diverse group with one thing in common, they all live in extreme environments. Some of the best known Aarchaea live in cattle rumens and termite guts, while others live in hot springs, geysers and submarine volcanoes. In nature, recently Aarchaea have been isolated from glacial ice and deep sea floors. It has been estimated that as much as 30% of Antarctica's biomass may be Aarchaeans. Most Aarchaea are obligate anaerobes which cannot survive exposure to oxygen. So that means they don't need oxygen for survival. And large number of aerogens release methane as a metabolic byproduct. Dear students, thus that means aerogens must have some unique structure. Let us know about that. Basic aerogen structure. 
the three primary regions of archaeal cell are the cytoplasm, cell membrane and cell wall. Above these three regions with an enlargement at right of the cell membrane structure, archaeal cell membranes are chemically different from all other living things including a backwards glycerol molecule and isoprene derivatives in place of fatty acids. The most striking chemical differences between archaea and other living things lie in their cell membrane. There are four fundamental differences between the archaeal membrane and those of all other cells. First is chirality of glycerol. Second is ether linkage. Third is isoprenoid chains. And fourth is branching of side chains. These may sound like complex differences, but a little explanation will make the differences understandable. Finally, let us have a glimpse on comparison of three domains on the basis of some specific properties. First is cellular membrane or cell membrane. In Archaea, they have usually ether linked lipids, while as seropeptidoglycan structures. While as in case of prokaryotes, they have ester linked lipids, but the structure is only peptidoglycan. While as in case of eukaryotes, they have ester linked lipids with various structures, including peptidoglycan and others. Second is gene structure. In case of Archaea, circular chromosomes are found with similar translation and transcription to that of eukaryotes. While as in case of prokaryotes, circular chromosomes are present with unique translation and transcription. While as in case of eukaryotes, multiple linear both chromosomes are present, similar translation and transcription to that of Archaea as I have already said. While as in case of internal cell structure, in Archaea there is no membrane bond organelles or nucleus. Similarly, in case of prokaryotes, there is no membrane bond nucleus or organelles. While as in case of eukaryotes, these are membrane bond organelles and have well defined nucleus. In case of metabolism, it takes various routes with methanogenesis unique to Archaea only. While as in case of prokaryotes, it also takes various routes including photosynthesis, aerobic and anaerobic respiration, including fermentation and autotrophy. While as in case of eukaryotes, only photosynthesis and cellular respiration is the way to metabolism. This was all about prokaryotes, eukaryotes and archaea. Friends, with this we conclude our today's lecture. Hope you have enjoyed and understood it very well. Thank you. Thank you.